in the darkness of night. In the deep forest, calls out a voice. A lingering hunger. The insatiable desire to consume human flesh. This is the domain of the Wendigo, a creature born from the darkest corners of human desperation and depravity. It was once a man, but no longer. It is a malevolent creature, a supernatural spirit, with an appetite so ravenous, it will stop at nothing. Long ago, life was much different, harder in some ways. This was before any European set foot on North American soil. The land was indifferent. And to the Native Americans who lived here, that meant enduring many hardships, including starvation. But for those who resorted to cannibalism as a means of survival, a curse fell upon them. They became Wendigo. It is said the first Wendigo was an Algonquian hunter. The hunter and his party became lost during a brutal winter storm. Starving and desperate, the hunter resorted to cannibalism, consuming the flesh of his companions. This act unleashed a curse, and the hunter became a Wendigo. He grew tall and emaciated, his eyes sunken and his teeth jagged. His hunger could never be satisfied, and he roamed the forest, preying on unsuspecting travelers. Soon, no one dared go into those woods, as his chilling cries could be heard at night. Stories, such as this, come from the cold, forested regions of the North American continent, primarily among the Algonquian-speaking peoples. It emerged from a world where the harsh winters could drive a person to unspeakable acts, including cannibalism, to survive. However, they are not merely horror tales. They serve as stern warnings against greed and selfishness. For should anyone give in to such behavior, they risk themselves becoming Wendigo, monstrous beings consumed by a never-ending hunger for human flesh. As a spirit, the Wendigo is seen as a manifestation of greed, gluttony, and the darker aspects of human nature. It is said to possess individuals who succumb to these vices, driving them to commit acts of violence, cannibalism, and other atrocities. In this context, it becomes a metaphorical representation of the destructive consequences of unchecked desire and moral corruption. For some, though, the Wendigo is also a physical entity, an embodiment of the supernatural, a creature that prowls the wilderness, preying upon unsuspecting persons who venture too far into the untamed reaches of the forest. In this regard, the Wendigo appears as a towering monstrosity with antlers or horns. Its gaunt frame, like a skeleton, with yellow, decaying skin, and its eyes glowing from within their deep sockets. In spite of this, the Wendigo possesses incredible, supernatural strength and endurance, moving with lightning speed and agility in the forest. Wendigo lore is filled with eerie and terrifying encounters but one particularly chilling story tells of a group of hunters who wandered off the beaten path. 
the party was hunting game, but found themselves in an unfamiliar part of the forest. As they traveled, they heard strange, guttural sounds echoing through the trees, and an ominous feeling settled over them. Ignoring their unease, the hunters pressed on until they stumbled upon a small clearing where they discovered the remains of a campsite. They assumed the camp had been abandoned, but upon closer inspection, discovered a grisly scene. Strewn about were the torn and mangled bodies of several people, their flesh gnawed to the bone. Horrified, the hunters realized they had stumbled into the domain of a Wendigo. Just as they were about to flee, they heard a haunting voice calling out from the darkness. It whispered promises of warmth and sustenance, urging them to stay and join in its feast. Frozen with fear, the hunters watched as a distorted shape emerged from the shadows, a grotesque form with sunken eyes and elongated limbs, its mouth dripping with blood. The hunters fled, running as fast as they could. Even so, some say they were never seen again. Others claim they were driven mad by the encounter. Another fascinating tale is that of a warrior on a hunting trip. It was the dead of winter and game was scarce, so the warrior had to go deeper into the forest than usual. He had heard tales of a Wendigo, possibly inhabiting these parts, but desperate times forced his hand. Reluctantly, the warrior plodded through the snow, up to a small hill, connecting a clearing. A foul odor was about, and the warrior sensed something was amiss. Slowly, he crept along bushes, his hair standing on end, until he saw a large, figure several yards ahead. It was crouched down on all fours, as though searching for something. It was a Wendigo. The warrior froze, an icy chill, shot down his spine. The Wendigo had not spotted him, although it must have known someone was close by as it curiously sniffed the air. The warrior carefully withdrew behind a tree. Nothing had prepared him for such an encounter. He thought to run away, but a Wendigo is much faster than any human. There was but one choice. He would have to injure it first. Steadily, the warrior drew his bow. His aim was true as he let loose the arrow and the market found. Yet, the outcome was inadequate. The arrow merely ricocheted off the Wendigo's thick hide. In a fit of rage, the creature darted toward the direction the warrior was hiding. The chase was on. The warrior headed straight down a ravine, nearly falling over. As he ran, he could sense the monster getting ever so close. His strength wavering, the warrior realized a physical contest was inevitable. And yet, that would almost certainly mean his demise, as the abomination chasing him could easily tear apart several men. As luck would have it, a dense wall of foliage lay ahead. The warrior, being much smaller, was able to squeeze through a small opening a few seconds later, though, the Wendigo found itself entangled. While the creature squirmed in defiance, the warrior hastily made his escape. However, not all Wendigo accounts are limited to lore. In the context of real, historical records, there are equally chilling events. One account is that of Swift Runner, a Cree trapper who lived in what is now Alberta, Canada. 
In the winter of 1878 through 1879, Swift Runner was residing with his family in a remote cabin near Fort Saskatchewan in the Canadian wilderness. Despite being well provisioned, Swift Runner's family mysteriously disappeared during the winter months. When authorities became suspicious and launched an investigation, they uncovered something horrific. Swift Runner had not only eaten his wife and children, but had also consumed the remains of several other individuals, including fellow trappers and members of his own extended family. Swift Runner's case became infamous as one of the most extreme instances of Wendigo psychosis, a cultural phenomenon observed among indigenous peoples of North America, where individuals believe themselves to be possessed by the spirit of the Wendigo. Such individuals, often resorting to acts of violence and cannibalism. Wendigo psychosis offers a fascinating insight into the human mind. It represents an extreme form of a culturally bound syndrome where societal beliefs and fears can manifest as symptoms of mental illness. The condition compels those affected to see themselves as monsters doomed to consume others to survive. On the other side of the coin is the story of Jack Fiddler from northwestern Ontario, Canada. He was an Ojikri, First Nations chief and shaman who claimed to have vanquished 14 Wendigos. In fact, between the late 19th and early 20th centuries, Fiddler gained notoriety for his reputed ability to hunt and kill Wendigos within his community. According to legend, Jack Fiddler and his brother Joseph were renowned for their shamanic powers and their ability to discern whether someone would turn into a Wendigo. However, in 1907, both Fiddler brothers, Jack and Joseph, were arrested by Canadian authorities and charged with the murder of individuals whom they believed to be possessed by the Wendigo. Their trials were highly publicized, drawing attention to the clash between indigenous spiritual beliefs and Western legal systems. Ultimately, they were both found guilty of manslaughter and sentenced to prison. However, before he could serve his sentence, Jack committed suicide. Meanwhile, Joseph died of consumption days before he would have been released on appeal. Of all the traits surrounding the Wendigo, that hunger is most riveting. It is often depicted as a voracious appetite, a primal instinct that overrides all other considerations, such as morality, empathy, and self-preservation. Even against its own will, the Wendigo is driven to commit acts of violence and cannibalism which it sees as the ultimate source of sustenance. Hence, in many stories, the Wendigo stalks victims with relentless determination until it can satisfy its craving. But this hunger is not merely physical. It is also spiritual, representing a profound emptiness or craving that cannot be satisfied through ordinary means. As well, it represents the destructive consequences of unchecked desire, greed, and gluttony, the darker aspects of human nature. Overall, the hunger of the Wendigo serves as a central motif in indigenous folklore, embodying the dangers of moral corruption, spiritual decay, and the violation of sacred taboos. It serves as a cautionary tale warning against the temptations of greed and the consequences of yielding to primal instincts.
Modern thoughts on the Wendigo vary widely depending on cultural, scholarly, and individual perspectives. Many people primarily view the Wendigo as a fascinating figure from indigenous folklore and mythology, appreciating its role in traditional stories and legends. From this perspective, the Wendigo is seen as a symbol of the natural world and the human psyche embodying themes of greed, hunger and the struggle between civilization and the wilderness. Some individuals and communities seek to preserve and honor indigenous folklore, including stories of the Wendigo as part of their cultural heritage. They may view the Wendigo as an important aspect of indigenous identity and a valuable source of cultural knowledge and wisdom. The Wendigo has also found its way into modern literature, film and other forms of popular culture where it often serves as a powerful and terrifying antagonist. In these contexts, the Wendigo may be portrayed in a variety of ways, ranging from a literal monster to a metaphorical representation of psychological or societal themes. Anthropologists and historians have noted that Wendigo legends are particularly prevalent in times of scarcity and are thought to reinforce social taboos against selfishness. This persistent relevance speaks to the Wendigo's power as a symbol. It challenges us to consider how much of our humanity we are willing to sacrifice for survival or gain. Thus, the Wendigo is not just a monster, but a mirror reflecting our darkest fears. Thank you for watching. We hope you found this video entertaining. We're a small channel that would appreciate your support. Please hit the like button. Also, let us know what you think in the comments below. Best of all, subscribe.